Welcome back to yet another installment of text processing and analysis. In this lesson, we'll look at, in this video, we'll look at lesson 9.1, processing tagged text. So let's take a look. <clears throat> the objective is that students will be capable of extracting information from text with parts of speech, part of speech tags. Okay, so whether that, that could be the case where you receive a corpus or text that already have parts of speech tags, uh, part of speech tags, or you yourself uh, go through and use a part of speech tagger to create parts of speech, part of speech tags, and then you need to somehow, you know, find in interesting information about this, <clears throat> about the text. There's a homework assignment that deals directly with this. So the logic is, um, it really varies. It can depend on how the part of speech tags are organized in comparison to the, the tokens that they're corresponding to. But in general, you first need to isolate the tokens, that is the words or punctuation, right? The actual language that was produced from their accompanying part of speech tags. So you need to be able to like isolate them. So okay, this is the word, this is the part of speech tag that goes with it. Somehow you need to get that point where you can look at uh, tokens, which are actual words and punctuation and their parts of their part of speech tags. Then you search for specific words, depending on what you want to do, you search for search for specific words, likely with regular expressions that have certain parts of speech um, tags, likely again with regular expressions. As we've seen nearly nearly every uh, exercise or nearly every lesson, we've seen regular expressions come up at least at at least at some point. So if you're still struggling with regular expressions, you really should take the time, invest the time to review them, go back to the lesson where I present them for the first time, which is 3.1, lesson 3.1, or find a good tutorial online. But the basics, you need to have a good understanding of the basics of regular expressions at this point. Okay, so let's give this a try. Download the mini core tagged zip file from the CMS and unzip it onto your hard drive so that it creates a directory. All right, so look for the mini core tagged zip file and then um, unzip it on your hard drive. And we will use that little corpus, which is one you actually need to use for your homework, uh, one of the homeworks. So let's just go with this first um, exercise. Write a program to print out to the screen all the adjective plus noun pairs. So you have an adjective and then follow, following the adjective, you have a noun. We wanna find all those adjective noun pairs, okay? Hint, it might be easiest to loop over the indexes of the word POS pairs within each file so that you can check if an adjective is followed by a word and if so, print both words based on the indexes. So. Let me just show you real quick. You need to download this zip file from the CMS and unzip it. And it should create a directory that looks like this. Here on my hard drive, I have, I have it right here. So these file names are really long. As you can see, they're, they're really long. Has a lot of code stuff in here. Uh, let me just open up one of these, first one. And what we have here is simply a token, an underscore, and a POS tag. A token, underscore, POS tag. So that's, that's the way these are set up. So in each line is a, a new uh, token POS pair, right? So you can use that information to help you find adjective noun pairs. So here's an example right here. We have convenient online banking service. Here's an adjective tag, right? JJ is one of the three adjective tags in the POS tag set, the uh, Penn Tree Bank POS tag set. And then NN is a singular common noun. So once again, you need to isolate the token from the POS tag and look at each in turn and say, okay, is the current POS tag, does it start with JJ? That means it's an adjective. Okay, let's look at the next word down. Does the next word down's POS tag start with NN? If it is, that's a noun. And so I wanna print those. Right, so that's why I say that it might be useful to loop over indexes rather than the actual words. So you're looking over the index 
so that you can index one ahead and look at the next one down. Say, is this a noun? If I have a JJ here, do I have it and then down here? Or that is, do I have a POS tag that starts with JJ? Is it followed by a POS tag that starts with NN? Okay. So give that a try, map it out, write it out, sketch it out um, before you start writing code. Just try and get the logic of that logic kind of, you know, formulated on what needs to happen where, and then worry about the code. Okay, so give it a try. All right, let's take a look on how at how we could do this. <clears throat> let's write a program to print out now additive noun pairs. Let's try this. Let's look at the code a bit before we run it. Import OS and RE, change directories into the uh, directory with all those files. Uh, this directory here has 1600 files, right? Okay. Then we're gonna get the file names that's, that end in txt in that directory, ignore case. So just in case we have any file names that have a capital txt, it'll still grab those. Loop over those file names, open up the current file. I will point out that the, the encoding is not UTF-8, unfortunately, but CP437 will do a good job to, to get the encoding uh, rendered correctly. Okay, save it to a variable name. I'm gonna read in all the lines at, um, at once. So I need to have all the, um, the lines of the current file in working memory, which is what happens here on line seven. By using read lines, plural S on lines, read lines to get um, a big list, each line that is hard return, so it could be more than a visual line, it could be a full paragraph, is in one element of this big list. And then I strip off on the right side, um, new line breaks on the right side of each element. And then here, um, I use a list comprehension to split up each word POS tag pair on the underscore separator. So the default argument or the default default separator to split is white space. But if I want to say, hey, I want you to split up on the um, underscore, right? I can say so right here, I can pass that in. So I'm saying for this element in the lines, lines is created up here, right? I'm going to split them up. I want to split them up on the underline. Okay, you know, let's just, let's just um, stop right there and just have this print, print this out right now. Let's just look at what we have here so far. I'm going to go ahead and just comment out the rest so that it doesn't run for the moment. I'm just going to run the script so we can see it. Um, let me just pull it back up. Okay, it's going through, it's going through. Let me just kind of stop it now. We got enough to look at what's going on. I stopped the script with that. Um, little red square stop sign over there. The idea of what I'm trying to get across here is we have a big list and within each list, we have a smaller list. And the first element of the, each smaller list is the token. And the second element is the POS tag. Okay. So we have a list of lists and each of the smaller lists just has two things, the current token and the current POS tag, All right? So compromise is now noun. Two has a POS tag of two. B has a VB. Etc. Okay, so that's what we're dealing with at this point. That's what lines has at this point. And then we jump into a for loop here. And like I said, it's best to index over the uh, to loop over the indexes, not the actual um, elements. So the way you do that, you can do range, and then you give it a number. And I want to give it the number of lines that there are, the number of actually pairs token POS tag pairs here, right? Um, let me just, I just wanna show you what that's doing. I'm not sure if uh, you understand how that's totally clear. Let me just comment that out so I can show you. All I'm doing, I'm saying, I just wanna go through the range of indexes from zero up to the number of uh, pairs minus one. So if I run this script, 
So it's just going through in each file, it's find the number of um, POS pairs. It's just printing out the number. Okay, I'll just go ahead and stop it now. So that's what that's what I represents here. I is simply a number of the current index of the pair, the token POS pair. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and run or look through this a bit. I'm going to use a try accept block. I want to say try to find um, a J, a JJ. Um, I want to find uh, at the, in the POS, I want to find JJ at the beginning of the string. That caret symbol means beginning of string. I want to find JJ. And in the current line, the current pair, I'm looking at the second thing has an index of one, right? Zero based language like um, zero based languages like Python have it. The first uh, index is zero. So I'm look at the second thing that is the POS tag. If you find JJ at the beginning of the string in the POS tag, and there's a keyword and there, right? And you find an NN at the beginning of the POS tag in the next word, I plus one, right? Then that means I have an adjective right here and I have a noun on the next one and I want to grab those, I want those. And so then I just print out, um, I'm using an F string here, right? This is an F string. This is identical to, let me just make it a little more explicit here lines you know i can do i can just um copy this a bit this is a this is identical to this so i'm saying give me the first word which should be an adjective right and right now with the zero i'm indexing into i'm indexing into the the token not the pos tag when I was using ones up here, right there, there's one, and there's one right here. I was looking at the POS tags. With zeros, now I want the actual words there. So I want the current word, which is I, right? Whatever it is, 220. And then I want I plus one. So I want 221. I want the next word down. And again, I want the tokens. I want the actual words, not the POS tags. So that's why I'm using zero. But if you try, if you, if you get an error, because you, you try to go to the next, um, word down, but there is no next word down, like we're at the end of a list, the last word in the, the file, it'll throw an index error. And if that happens, then you just say, hey, there, we apparently have a document final adjective here and then just move on. Just don't worry about it, just move on. Okay, so I'm gonna run this and see what happens. Run the script and we have a lot. It's going crazy. I'll just go ahead and stop it now. We have plenty to look at now. Um, Here's low risk, adjective, noun, such patience, single life, limited exercise next year. Yeah, these are all adjective noun pairs. Now there are there will be some errors here. Um, key element, I guess key is functioning like an adjective there. But anyway, does a pretty good job. Did a pretty good job there. Well, that's a pronoun. It, Anyway, that might be an error right there. Okay. So again, the logic, the, the real kicker here, this, this all should be pretty familiar by this point, right? Just going looping over a bunch of files in a directory. We've done that quite a bit now. Um, the real kicker here is that we need to split up. We need to isolate the token that is the word from its POS tag, but have them together still within a larger data structure, like a list. And then we loop over the list that hold, that's holding those smaller lists. And we go in and say, okay, is the current POS tag, does it start with JJ? And does the next pair's POS tag start with NN? If so, then we want to print it out to the console. And then we do it, we put it into our try accept block so that when we're looking, when we're looking at the, the next word down, if there is no next word down, It'll come down here and just print out this little message and move on to the next pair, next file at that point. Okay, so if you'd like to pause the video and take a look either here, you can take a look here on my screen or in the solution file. I can make this a little bit smaller to try and get more of this on at the same time. Uh, if you'd like to just pause the video right about, 
You can't see every last thing, but um, good. So this part up here should be familiar, hopefully by this point. This is the new stuff down here. Okay. Now let's see what else we can do here. Let's modify your program to calculate the frequency of the adjective noun pairs and write them to a CSV file ordered in descending order by frequency. So as we saw a second ago, if we just print them out to the console, there's a lot of them going on in here, right? We have a lot of adjective noun pairs, which is not surprising given that we put adjectives before nouns in English more often than not, much more often than not. Um, so go ahead and, and make a frequency list of each of these pairs. So the key will be the pair. The key will be the string of adjective space noun. That will be your key in your frequency dictionary. Okay, so give that a try for a few minutes here. Again, I would probably just kind of walk through with metacode, like how, how you know, what should I do first? Okay, I got to go to the directory, I got to change into the directory. I got to read all the files into a variable in my, you know, Python script. Then I got to start looping over those files and dealing with them. I got to have some frequency dictionary before that point though, before I start looping, I got to create an empty frequency dictionary that I can populate as I'm going through the files. Okay. Um, anyway, just kind of think through what, what needs to happen. What should happen here? Ready, set, think and do. All right, let's take a look how you can do this. All right, so. All right, modify your program to calculate the frequency of the adjective noun pairs and write them, um, write them to a CSV file ordered in descending order by frequency. Okay, so this, this is what we just saw. You change directories into the directory with all those 1600 files, get all the file names, create empty uh, dictionary that we're gonna populate, start looping over the files, open a connection to the current file, save it as a variable, read in all the lines at once into a big list, strip out, um, or strip off the, the new line break on the right side. Because when you do read lines, it saves the new line break on the right side of each line, which we don't want. And then break them up into lists so that we have small a, a two item list within the larger list that um, first element is the token, the word. Second element is the POS tag. Good. This is all what we saw a second ago. Okay. This is where um, some new stuff happens. Okay, we're gonna loop over the indexes like we did a second, uh, second ago. We're gonna try to look at uh, the current word POS tag, see if you see an adjective, uh, one of the, all adjective tags begin with JJ, right? So that caret symbol means beginning of string, JJ, good. And uh, the current words POS tag and the next word down, I plus one, look at its POS tag and if you see and then at the beginning of the string, then I want to work with this. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out the adjective. We're gonna say line, the current line, the zero index thing that is the actual token, the word. We wanna make an uppercase version of it. And then we wanna get the noun out. So that's I plus one, the next word down should be a noun if we're in this block of code because this, this uh, if statement evaluated to true push that to uppercase, push the actual word, not the POS tag, but the word. That's why we have a zero there, looking at the word, not the POS tag. Again, up here on line 13, we were looking at POS tag. That's why we had one here and one here. But now we're looking, we wanna grab the words, the actual token, so we use zeros down here. Okay, then we wanna concatenate those together. So it's good old fashioned string concatenation with plus signs. The adjective is a string plus a space plus the noun. Great. So that'll be our, our key in the frequency dictionary. And so I'll just use the get method. It's the most succinct here, right? 
Let's say in your frequency dictionary, which I defined right there on line five, empty dictionary. In your frequency dictionary, I want you to assign to adjective noun the current key, whatever the current key value is, plus one. But if you don't have that current key, give me a zero and then add one, that is make it one. Save that back, back into the um, frequency dictionary. And if you happen to hit an adjective that, that's at the end of a document, just come down here and say so, and then move on to the next pair, just move on. Okay, so that should populate this frequency dictionary like we did in the previous exercise. Actually, we didn't do that previous exercise. We just simply printed out to the console. But now we've created a frequency dictionary. And then we're gonna use our good old friend here, sorted, dot items, lambda, reverse true. We've seen this, saw this quite a bit with frequency dictionaries, right? Um, I think it was week seven with the lesson, uh, lesson seven point something. So if you need to review that, that's how you get a reversed um, frequency list. That is frequency list in descending order by frequency. And then once we get that done, then we're gonna loop over, um, well, we're gonna actually first open a connection to an out file. I'm gonna create a file in my downloads directory called frequencies, adjective, noun, CSV. I'm gonna write out, so I need the W there. I have to specify it as some variable name. I'll choose F out, file out. On line 26, I uh, write out a header, adjective, noun, tab, backslash T is tab again capital N is N for the number of, and then a backslash N is a new line break. And then here I jump into a for loop. I'm looping over this list that we created on 22 up here. And I'm looking at uh, KV, right? K is uh, what was once the key before. V is the value. So K is the adjective noun pair. V is the number within this frequency list that we created right there on 22. And then here I'm, um, writing this out to that um, file out, that, that F out file connection. I'm using an F string here. Again, with F strings, you put an F before the opening quote of the string, and then you can do what's called string interpolation, which means you just plop in within curly braces, the variable name where you wanna put a value. So K tab V new line break. Just to be explicit, this is identical. This would give me the same result if, if I were to do this. Okay, so line 29 will give me the same result as line 28. I'm um, taking K. Uh, you know what I need to do? I need to course this to a string actually right there. Uh, taking K, which is a string, concatenating with a tab and then I'm concatenating that with a string version of V, which is an integer, the frequency, which I need to course to string so I can so I can concatenate it with these other strings and a new line break. Anyway, this is kind of the, the base way, not the base, the, um, the old fashioned way, I'm not sure how to term it here. Uh, to do it, you can do this with an F string um, with string interpolation with this curly braces around variable names. Either one will work. I'll just do the first one there. Okay, so when I run this thing, I should end up with um, a, a CSV file named freaks add noun CSV in my downloads directory. Let's see if that happens. If I let this run. It's going. It's finding a few document final adjectives in there. Interesting. Still working, still going through. And there we go, now it's done. Exit code zero, good, so no problems. So let me go to my downloads and see if I have a file called freaks adds noun CSV now. Freaks adds noun, yep, right there. Let me just double click it. <clears throat> it's 1.5 megabytes, pretty large thing. Let's take a look at what we have here. Tab separator, yep, that's good. And what do we have here? Uh oh, okay. Apparently we got some, some, 
adjective noun combinations we don't hear that are a little bit messed up. Like it didn't parse correctly, I guess. I'm not sure where that went wrong, but anyway, let's just focus on the main thing here. So first time is the most frequent adjective noun pair. Many people, the second most frequent, same time, third most, et cetera, all the way through here. Okay, so um, that's how you could go about getting a frequency list of adjective noun pairs in a bunch of files. I will say that I could clean this up a bit, get, get rid of like commas here on line eight, I have a comma at the right, on the right side of hand. Also on 22, I have a comma on the right side of trial, which I really should clean up if I were to use this for you know, like an assignment or a paper or, or something meaningful, I'd do a little bit more cleaning up before I use this, I yeah, clean this type of stuff up. So, but anyway, that's how you would do that one. Just go ahead and take a look at my solution file because I'm not gonna be able to display all this on one, one screen. Take a look at my solution file for that little exercise about uh, modifying your program to calculate the frequency of the noun. I just have noun pairs and write them to a CSV file in descending order by frequency. Okay, now let's just kind of ramp it up a bit here. Nothing too crazy. The only craziness here with this next exercise is changing your regex. Uh, modify your program to write to a CSV file all the superlative adjective plus plural non-proper noun pairs. This is simply a, a practice in figuring out what tags, uh, what tags you need to find superlative adjectives. Right, there are three types of adjectives. There are adjectives, there are comparative adjectives that have er, right, like bigger, and then there are superlative adjectives like biggest est at the end, right? Um, so I will let you Google or look at uh, Penn Tree Bank tag set and figure out what the tag is for superlative adjectives. And then the plural non-proper noun, nouns uh, tag is, is a, little, a little bit more involved, but give it a try. See if you can um, modify your regexes looking at parse speech tags to make this work. Ready, set, give it a try. Okay, let's take a look on how, at how I did this. <clears throat> Copy this over to here. All right, so all this beginning part is pretty much the same. And like I said, the really only difference is right in here on line 13. The only thing we're ha that's happening here is that we're looking at uh, this regex right here. JJS. So what you need to do is look at the Penn Tree Bank tag set for English, which there's a couple ways so you can do it. Um, here from the, no, not Penn. Well, this would work. This is, they use the same tag set. Um, Matt, let me look at a more succinct list here on this website from Ling. Anyway, that web, that URL right there, which I have linked to for my, my uh, lesson plan. What I want to point out right here is this, JJS is the POS tag for adjective superlative, superlative adjectives. So jumping back over to my script right here on line 13, I'll zoom way in so we can look at this regex in detail. Let me not have it right below that other one. Okay, right here. So R quote, you can use single or double. I use single here. Carrot symbol, which means beginning of string, find JJS and then find the end of the string. That is, I want the entire string to be those three exact characters, J, J, S. Okay, I'm looking at the current words POS tag, and I want the next words POS tag to be exactly this. Beginning of string, that is fine. Go to the beginning of the string and then start looking, N, N, S, and then make sure that's the entirety of the string because that, that um, dollar sign means end of string. And if you look at NNS over here, we have plural. Okay, now I'm plural. All right, so let's try that. Let me zoom out a bit. And then all the rest is, is the same from our previous exercise, just creating a frequency list. Good, once we've done that, let's sort it up. 
I'm just setting order on frequency and let's write out to the hard drive as a CSV file. This is all the same. So let me, let me just run this and see what happens. Let me um, close it down over here. Don't save anything. And it's working. I can tell it's working because I haven't seen exit code something yet. No, I, right when I said it, I did. Exit code zero. So I could tell it was it was still going because I didn't see this little thing down here. Process finished with exit code either zero or one. Okay, let's come back over here and look at this. Let's see here. Most people, hmm. Yeah, I don't know if most is most. Yeah, I guess most is the superlative of more. Yeah. Most is the superlative of more. Best friends, best interested, interest, least, least that's okay. Here we have an error, but looks like uh, code, uh, part of speech tagging error. Right? That's is not a noun. Most countries, finest reds, most men. So, Anyway, that uh, it worked, but again, there'll be some errors with the part of speech tagging. But um, good, we have superlative adjectives plus plural nouns there. And that does it um, for that, that thing. You know what, let me just change this because my solution file doesn't worry about proper or common nouns there. What does it? No, one second. Well, actually, it does. Sorry. Okay. So that is how you go about doing processing tag, how you, you can use tags to get certain combinations of words out. So hopefully, at this point, you're able to extract information from text with part of speech tags. Okay. Great. Uh, as always, I'm super happy to help during my office hours. Please feel free to stop by, stop in, into my office hours when you need to. See you next time.